Welcome. This is Medicare Basics. This is Pam, uh, one of your nurse advocates from your nurse advocate consulting. And I'm really super excited. I know um, Linda was unable to make the last one. So this is our encore presentation. And Linda, one of the the other your nurse advocate out of your nurse <laughs> consulting is going to be sharing Medicare basics. You know, I just want to um, preface this by I know we've got a lot of comments, a lot of inter interaction when uh, we were promoting this. And I know there's a lot of angry people out there about denials, Medicare Advantage plans. And so we'll address those things. And we just want to say that's why Linda and I are doing this, because as nurse advocates, our loyalty and allegiance is to you, our clients. We don't work for an insurance company. We don't work for a hospital. We don't work for a clinic. So we want you to get the education so that you can make the informed decisions. So um, we know there are some challenges out there, but Linda's going to uh, address those as she shares our presentation. So Linda, go ahead, take it over. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry I was able to uh, not be present at the original presentation of Medicare Basics, but I hope this one makes up for it. And yes, Pam and I are going to address some of those concerns because as advocates, we hear from our constituents, we hear from people in the public and our clients on some of the frustrations that they're feeling with all of these plans, not just with the Advantage plans, but also with the Medigap plans. And we'll go through all of that. So let's get started. So today we're gonna to talk about the basics of Medicare and what you need to know as you choose and decide about a Medicare plan that's right for you. And I do love a lot of animation when I do presentations. So just know that. So our goals for today are to explore the ABCs of Medicare and understand some of the differences between Medicare A, B, C, and D. Oh, yes, it's a complex, convoluted system that we all have to try to understand. I want to help provide information on the provisions of each plan. So as you do your due diligence, around looking at these plans and finding one that's right for you, you have some information and are able to ask some pronounced questions and some really good investigated due diligence in regards to whoever you're working with to, to sign up for some of these plans. And then hopefully we'll address some concerns or questions. So what is Medicare? Well, we all know it's a health insurance for people age 65 and older. But it also is for people under the age of 65 that have certain disabilities, such as ALS. Um, it's also for people with end stage renal disease at any stage of their kidney disease. So Medicare has been around for a long time, but it is still mostly the biggest population that is receiving Medicare right now is the population that is 65 years and older. Well, that airplane went by really quick. And the reason why it went by really quick is because with Medicare, if you are not lawfully present in the US, which means if you are if you travel or you like to travel and you travel internationally, Medicare will not pay for any part A or B claims that you incur as you travel outside of the United States. If you are living there part-time internationally outside of the United States, you cannot join a Medicare Advantage plan. And you're also not able to join any Medicare drug plan. You specifically have to be residents at all times in the U.S. in order to receive those benefits. But we'll get into how you can work around that a little later in the presentation. So who runs Medicare? Well, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or called CMS, administers the program, but Social Security, or SSA, enrolls most individuals into these programs. But the Railroad Retirement Board also enrolls railroad retirees, people that work for the railroad system, the train systems. They have a special program under Medicare for their retirees. So... Medicare A actually is considered a hospital insurance. So it really helps cover all the inpatient costs once you are an inpatient in a hospital. 
It also provides services and payment for rehabilitation in skilled nursing facilities and some long-term hospitals or long-term care hospitals. It also, believe it or not, covers blood transfusions if you are an inpatient in a hospital. It also covers home health services. Oh, one of the things I want to let you know about blood, it will cover up to three units of blood. So if you have a disease that requires blood transfusions, Medicare will help cover it if you're on the inpatient side of the system or before surgery. It will cover home health services. It will cover hospice care. But under hospice care, what usually happens at least 99% of the time, original Medicare will be billed for your hospice care, even if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan. What happens is, is under hospice care, if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, your insurance flips over to Medicare Part A because the Advantage plans really don't have a system in place, a really good consistent system to cover all the costs that are incurred under hospice care. So what do you pay for it? Well, under Medicare A, you do pay co-payments, you do have co-insurance, and you do have deductibles. So if you're in a Medicare Advantage plan or have other insurances such as a Medigap plan, which we'll go through, Medicaid, employer insurance, retiree, or some level of union coverage, your co-payments, your co-insurance, and your deductibles may be different. So there's a lot of variables with this. So this is why it's really important to really look at everything in your financial picture or where you are in your life to determine what plan is going to be the best for you and provide you with the best services in the most cost efficient way. So Medicare A, there's another caveat to this is, are you an inpatient or are you an outpatient? If you're an inpatient, the hospital has formally admitted you under a doctor's order or a health provider's order. So you are actually a patient in that hospital and you are admitted. You're an outpatient if you're getting emergency services or getting observation services, which may involve an overnight stay. Sometimes you'll present to the emergency department and because they're really not sure what's going on, they may say to you, well, we want to keep you overnight. Well, you need to ask at that time, what does that mean? Am I going to be admitted or I, am I under observation status? Each day you stay, you need to ask. You need to ask your hospital MD, your discharge planner, your, the social worker or a patient advocate if you are an inpatient or an outpatient. And, and Linda, the reason can I, why. Mm -hmm. Can I just add one thing to sure. that? Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say that that if you have a straight Medicare plan, or, you know, and maybe with a Medigap or a supplement, if you stay in the hospital past two midnights, you have to be changed to inpatient with Medicare. Um, mm -hmm. The only reason why uh, there would be certain circumstances that they may not, and that's why it should involve an advocate. But if, if you are in the hospital receiving more than just custodial care and you cross that second midnight, the hospital needs to change you to inpatient. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Um, a lot of times what happens is your MD or the healthcare provider will keep you as an out, outpatient for observation services, and they can keep you one day, two day, three days while they decide whether they want to admit you or whether they want to release you. But if you are under an observation status for greater than 24 hours, you must receive from them, either from utilization review discharge planning, case management, and you need if you don't receive it, you need to ask for it, a Medicare outpatient observation notice, also called MOON. This notice tells you why you're an outpatient, getting observation services, and how it affects what you pay in the hospital or after you leave. This is a very important if you have a Medicare Advantage plan. And I think sometimes that is where some of the frustration comes in, is people aren't aware what they have to pay 
if they are on a Medicare Advantage plan and they're kept in the hospital under an observation status. And Linda, if I could add just something here, sure. a lot of the a lot of the Medigap insurances or the supplements or the Medicare Advantage plans, they will have if you're in observation, if you're in that outpatient status while you're in the hospital, is they may have a dollar amount per day that you pay, and then after three, after four, after five days, depending on their policy, then you would have, then the coverage would be paid as, you know, covered under Medicare A. So it's really important to know if you're in an outpatient or an observation bed, what your daily copay is going to be. And mm -hmm. the sad thing is, is hopefully in January, when Medicare is coming down a little bit harder on these Advantage plans, is that... Um, when you have a Medicare Advantage plan, they would like to keep you in an observation. We at the hospital have seen people in observation for five days at a time, and the the Advantage plans, the insurance companies, not wanting to allow them to be made an inpatient and actually denying claims. So there's a lot of um, discord there, and hopefully in January, Medicare is um, coming down a little harder on the Advantage plans, saying that they have to follow the Medicare guidelines the Medicare rules, which means if someone is going to be in the hospital crossing those two midnights, they're receiving treatment, then they should be admitted under the inpatient mm -hmm. status. Yeah, just a little FYI, they've always been supposed to be following the Medicare guidelines, but somehow they've been able to do some workarounds and, you know, no discounting the Medicare Advantage plans because there is a purpose for them. There's a reason why they're out there, but I think there has to be some tweaking to the actual program and what they consider following Medicare rules and guidelines. Instead of their own interpretation, they need to follow it just as any other provider, such as your hospital, your home health, and your hospices have to do. They need to be following the same rules that all of us have to follow in those same situations. So let's move on to Medicare B. Medicare B is considered a medical insurance. It's something that you may or may not want to enroll in. A lot of times when you're 65, you automatically enroll into Part A if you have enough hours substantiated over your lifetime of working hours and money paid into the Medicare system, you get Medicare A once you sign up at 65. Medicare B, you don't have to. Some individuals choose not to have Medicare B. If you choose to have Medicare B, it is considered a medical insurance. It helps cover doctor and outpatient services, and it covers some preventative services to maintain health and prevent any chronic disease that you may have from possibly getting worse or having you end up in the hospital. But you need to understand it only pays 80% of the Medicare approved services, so you are responsible for the other 20%. Medicare B is all, will come out of your social security check and the dollar amount that comes out, there is a base rate which changes every year. And then there's an additional amount that gets tacked onto it based on your overall income. If you are above the income threshold, you will have to pay an additional amount out of pocket as you receive that, and you will receive a separate bill for that, or they will take it automatically out of your Social Security. So you need to look at those things, because even though you're paying for it, it's still only going to cover you at 80%. So you will either have to pay for that out of pocket or have some other type of Medigap or supplemental insurance to cover that other 20%. So what do I pay for it? Well, if you're in a Medicare Advantage plan or have other insurances, again, like Medigap, Medicaid, employer, retiree, or union coverage, your co-payments, your co-insurance, and all your deductibles are going to be different. So that is why it is really, really important to make sure as you look at these plans, understand what that means to you, especially if you have a working spouse or you are still working or you're not, and you are on a pretty tight fixed income, that will all make help the variables will be used to make these decisions in regard to what plan is good for you. So under original Medicare, again, Part B deductible applies, you must pay all costs 
up to the Medicare approved amount until you meet the annual Part B deductible. And that this year was $226, the annual Part B deductible. Once that deductible is met, then coverage is at 80%. Medicare pays its share, of course, which is the 80%, but you're still going to be responsible for that other 20% of the approved amount. And there is no yearly limit on what you pay out of pocket if you have original Medicare. So that what, what that means is like if you were, when you're working and you have commercial insurance, once you hit a deductible, things get covered at 100% or they get covered or totally certain things will get covered and there's no MAC. There's a, you've met that threshold where with Medicare Part B, there really isn't. You're constantly having to pay that 20%. So what isn't covered under Part A and Part B is most dental care. That's why a lot of individuals will seek out a Medicare Advantage plan, because under a lot of these plans, dental care and eye exams, which are not covered under Medicare Part A, at least for the prescription glasses, cataracts and cataract surgery are covered under A and B because it's a surgical procedure and it's considered medical. Whereas eye exams for prescription glasses are not. Um, dentures are not covered. Long-term care is not covered. Cosmetic surgery is not covered. Massage therapy is not covered. Routine physical exams are not covered. And hearing aids and exams for fitting them are not. And that's why these Medicare Advantage plans have taken these components that are not covered under normal original Medicare Part A and Part B and taken them and put them in as extra benefits into these Medicare Advantage plans, which make, which make it very attractive to a lot of individuals in regards to these things that if they kept original Medicare A, and Part B, they would have to pay for these services out of pocket or get a special policy to cover these things. There are a lot of Medicare Advantage plans that do cover dentures, eye exams, hearing aids, massage therapy, silver sneakers programs, gym memberships, dietary um, needs, especially if you're having outpatient procedures, they'll provide meals to you at home for seven days. But remember, a lot of that you need to know is is this right for me? Is this right for me for the next 12 months? Because once you sign up, if it's not your original, this plan is yours for 12 months. Linda, before we move on, could you sure. briefly, um, when we were talking about the physical exams, do they get that annual Medicare, um, their, their annual Medicare checkup? Yes, yes, they do. And actually, your medic if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, they will actually call you and say, it is time for your medical, your annual Medicare physical exam. And they will either have a nurse come out to the home or they will go and send you to the physician's office because they want to make sure you have that plan. But routine physicals, if you're just going to the doctor because you're not feeling good or you just want another exam, they're not going to keep paying for it. But that annual physical Medicare exam, they will pay for that. And they will also have a nurse. Some of these plans will have a nurse triage system where a nurse will do a telehealth visit with you for that annual plan so they can show that you've done it, received it, so they can make sure that if there are issues that are going on, they can take care of it early so it doesn't cost the plan and or you a lot of money later on. So Medicare C, that is our Medicare Advantage plans. They call it Medicare C, but it truly is the Advantage plans. It's a way to get your Medicare benefits through private insurance companies that are approved and contracted with Medicare. That is why the people that call you during this time with your because you're eligible due to your age or whatever else is going on with you in your lifetime, these are insurance brokers. These are not clinicians. These are not nurses. These are not doctors. These are not PAs. These are insurance brokers trying to sell you a plan. So you need to understand that, that the people are calling you are people who are working for these insurance companies who want to sell you the plan and may not know or understand all the components of the plan. They have a scripted message that they are utilizing and they ask the same questions 
over and over because they need to get basic information to get you signed up to the plan. But it is up to you to ask the more detailed plan questions for the plan and to do your due diligence regarding the plan because they are not clinicians and they don't know your health care. So these Medicare Advantage plans do include Part A and Part B coverage and usually other benefits as we talked about on the previous slide that Medicare usually doesn't cover. Most of these plans will provide prescription drug coverage and we'll get into how that works in a little bit. So what do you need to know about these plans? In order to join a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to give the insurance broker your Medicare number. They go into the system to make sure you have both Part A and Part B, because what happens with the plan is they use your Part B benefit from your Social Security to help pay for the premium for these plans. But that doesn't mean that you still don't have to pay more for the plan. It will be based on income, volume, and the plan itself. You must live in the service area of the plan. You must be a U.S. citizen or lawfully present in the United States. But you can join if you have a pre-existing condition. There is no disclaimer on pre-existing chronic conditions such as diabetes. So what else do you need to know? Medicare Advantage plans, as Pam and I have already talked about, must follow Medicare rules. But somehow along the line, their interpretation of following those rules sometimes gets a little skewed. And I'm not saying that they're doing anything, anything illegal or wrong. But a lot of times, remember, these are insurance companies that are selling these plans. So they have their own guidelines and rules that they are following. And they are following Medicare rules in regards to the provision of the plans, but sometimes things get lost in the details. So it is up to the consumer, as we say, when you buy a car or a home or anything else, you need to do your due diligence to make sure that what you are purchasing is really what you need and is going to provide you with all the things and services that are important to you in a cost-effective an efficient way. You can join or drop a Medicare Advantage plan only at certain times of the year, which is during open enrollment, which would take effect January 1st of the following year. Okay? You need to make sure that you are present in the United States. You need to make sure that you have, if you have a pre-existing condition, that they are you're letting them know that you have the pre-existing condition because that does affect your premiums in regards to these plans and what the plan will cover, especially when it comes to medication. So how do you pay for these plans? It depends on whether the plan charges a monthly premium. It also depends on whether the plan is an HMO, which means you have to stay strictly and rigidly within a certain system with certain physicians, certain hospitals, anything outside of there is not covered. If it's a PPO, you have a little more latitude and flexibility with your choices of hospitals and doctors, but you still have to stay within a certain network. You have a Medicare savings account plan, which actually is very similar to where your money is put in and you can look at that plan as a savings plan to cover certain services. Then there are other plans which are more for individuals with disabilities. And if you want more information on those plans, Pam and I can, can take you offline and talk to you more about them because they're extremely detailed. For the presentation that we're doing now, we really want to focus on basically your HMO and your PPO plans, which are the majority of the Medicare Advantage plans that are out there. You need to know with these Medicare Advantage plans whether it's going to pay for part of your Part B premium or whether you're going to be paying an additional amount above and beyond your Part B premium, which is related to your income. You need to know whether the plan has an annual deductible. 
How much are you going to pay for each doctor visit or specialist visit? Because remember, it's looked at as an insurance, as a private insurance. So if you remember back or remember now when you're working, when you go to your doctor's office on your insurance card, it says $20 copay for every doctor visit, $40 for a specialist, $20 for a therapy visit, $600 for an emergency department visit. It's the same thing with these Advantage plans. They're treated like an insurance, but they must follow the Medicare rules and guidelines. The type of healthcare services and what you want to get out of the plan is really important. So my recommendation and Pam's recommendation is as you look at these plans, first look at what do you feel your needs are? for this next coming year. What do you have planned? Do you have any major surgeries planned? Do you need a knee replacement or a hip replacement? Are you having some procedures done? Do you think you're gonna need a lot of dental work or eye exams? Are you looking at cataract surgery? Are you gonna be traveling a lot? Will you be out of the United States for a large portion of this time? Because all of those things will play into the type of plan that you'll need to cover you for those next 12 months. You also need to know whether you can get an outside provider or you need to stay in network because some individuals really are very attached to their primary care provider and they want to stay with them and don't want to change now. They've had that primary care provider for the last 20 years. That provider knows them. They know their history. They don't want to have to start all over again with somebody new. So that's also really important as you pick one of these plans. And you need to understand whether it offers extra benefits. And also if you have Medicaid, because there are dual plans that have Medicare, Medicaid coverage under these Advantage plans. So Medicare D, what does Medicare D cover? Well, it covers prescription drug coverage. Yes, we know that. It's run by private companies that are approved by Medicare, which can be either Medicare Advantage plans or separate Medicare prescription drug plans. It helps cover the cost of your prescription drugs, but each plan varies and the cost of drugs vary based on the type of coverage that you need and have and the types of medication that you have. They're put into what we call tier systems. So how does it work? To add the Medicare drug coverage or the Part D drug coverage to original Medicare, some Medicare cost plans, some Medicare private fee, fee, oh, my tongue, excuse me, some Medicare private fee for service plans and Medicare saving plan will all have this Medicare D benefit. Uh, Medicare Advantage plans or other Medicare plans have this drug coverage as automatically a part of their plan but not all Medicare Advantage plans will offer drug coverage. You need to be very clear. So if you are on a lot of medications, you need to run through those medications as you sign up with these plans to make sure that these, plan, the, these drugs are covered under these tier system plans. Medications fall into what they call tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier one being the most inexpensive, the most commonly used medications. And actually Medicare has stated these in their infinite um, audits of a lot of the claims for Medicare Advantage plans and Medicare D audits, they have decided there are certain medications that fall into this tier one category for most or the majority of Americans. So they are at a very low cost under tier one for the individual or sometimes at no cost at all. Part B are in our medications that may cost a little more, but are still pretty commonplace for the individual or may not have a generic are mostly brand. So they're put into a part B. Your part C tiers are your most expensive drugs. These are drugs that are, are specialty drugs or drugs that really do not have are still under patent and may not have any type of generic substitute and are very expensive to make and to dispense. So you need to make sure you are reviewing these medications to know where your medications fall under these tier systems to know what your cost will be either under a Medicare Advantage plan or a basic original Medicare plan with a Medigap supplement. You must live in the plan area in order to join a Part D 
Medicare plan. You need to lawfully be present in the United States. You cannot be living in Greece or in Germany and have Medicare D coverage for your medications there. Now just note that there are some Medicare Advantage plans that will cover you outside of the United States. There is usually an exorbitant or an extra cost for this international type of coverage because the healthcare systems in Europe and in other areas are very different, but they will cover you for certain things such as an emergency visit, or hospitalization with emergency medication management. So there are certain plans, but you need to investigate which plans will provide that level of coverage, especially if you're planning to be outside the United States for three, six or nine months or longer. So your actual drug coverage cost will vary, as I said, based on the plan's formulary and the tier the drug is in. Now, remember, there have been a few changes to this formulary through the current um, political administration, whereas you, can no, you no longer pay more than $35 for insulin. That is a huge, huge benefit, both under the original Medicare Part D plan and under the Advantage plans, because insulin costs were exorbitant. And if you are diabetic and on insulin, you know exactly what I am talking about. These costs are almost cost prohibitive in a lot of ways for the type of insulin that you may need. So you also need to understand as you look at these plans and you look at the Medicare drug coverage, which drug benefit you're in, whether you've met the deductible under Part D for original Medicare, or whether you're in what they call catastrophic coverage phase. It also is going to depend which pharmacy you use. Is that pharmacy contracted with the Part D prescribers or Medicare contracted pharmacy plans or under the Medicare Advantage plan. It will be important that it, that it be in network because the medication will be cheaper through a network pharmacy. You may have to pay pretty much retail price if it's out of a network pharmacy that's not approved by Medicare. Yes, and let's take a deep breath because this is all very, very, a lot of information. But let's get into catastrophic coverage. Catastrophic coverage is once you've reached your out-of-pocket spending of $7,400 under Part D, you'll automatically get this, which means you only pay a small coinsurance percentage, which is really no more than 5% of what that drug costs for your covered Part D drugs. But it's really important that you work with your pharmacist and your healthcare provider in regards to your medication and when you will hit that $7,400 out-of-pocket spending. Linda, could you give an example of when someone might hit that? Um, if they are on a lot of medications, such as if they're on two types of insulin, if they are on medications specifically for dementia or Parkinson, where they're higher tiered medications, they will reach that limit sooner. Once they reach that limit, that dollar amount that they were paying priorly drops to this catastrophic coverage. The pharmacy, because they've been submitting these claims to the Part D plans, it automatically tracks when they hit that dollar amount. So you'll see that they have this $7,400 amount and then it keeps bringing it down as they continue to pay on these medications. So when that medication hits that 7,400, then that medication drops and they automatically start paying less for it. So they may be paying, they may have a drug like um, Eliquis or Plavix that they're paying, which is on a higher tier, that they're paying a lot more money for. They may be paying 40 or 60 or $70 for it. Once they hit that tier of $7,400, that medication cost drops and they so pay Linda, that, that smaller would, coinsurance. Mm -hmm. Would that include such things like as chemo or, or things like that? Yes, it would, include, it would include chemotherapy drugs as an outpatient or ones that they're taking through um, you know, orally at home. Yes, it would reach, once it reaches that, it automatically drops. Thank you. So Medicare supplemental insurance or Medigap coverage. 
So how does it work? Again, this is a coverage that is sold by private insurance companies. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Aetna, Humana, all of them have Medigap coverages along with Medicare Advantage plans. When you are contacted by them or when you contact them after you've done some due diligence in regards to what's important to you and you've decided that, you know what, I really think I want to stay with original Medicare with a Medigap coverage. And you look at the ones that meet your needs in regards to coverage because there are tiers of A through D and E and F, and we'll get into those a little bit, but you have different tiers and different coverage limits and different costs to the Medigap coverage. So Medigap coverage, what it does is it's a gap. It covers the gap of costs that Medicare doesn't. So if you are hospitalized and you go into the hospital and you are admitted, there is a deductible that you pay when you are on, on original Medicare a Medigap supplement will cover that gap in cost or cover that cost so you don't have to. So if your coverage is $1,800, that Medigap coverage will cover that for your hospitalization. But just know every time you go into the hospital, you incur another deductible under that Medicare A benefit. So it does pay for certain supplies, it also pays, so your co-insurance, as I said, your co-payments, and some of your deductibles. So a lot of times you could, under these Medigap coverages, go to your physician's office for a visit and not have to pay anything. But in a sense, you still are paying for it because you're paying for it ahead of time through the Medigap coverage payment. Now, mind you, you're still getting taken out Part B under your Part B from your Social Security. Medigap coverage is above and beyond that. So you're not only paying for your Part B benefit and you're going to be paying for the Medigap coverage based on the cost and your age and the tier that you want from these private insurance companies. So you need to take that into consideration. But yes, you could walk into your doctor's office and not have to pay a dime. But yet you're paying monthly $375 individually for your Medigap coverage. Each individual has to pay for their own Medigap coverage. Your spouse and you can have the same company or insurance company cover you, but each of your plans will be individual. So you will each individually pay that Medigap coverage. And Lynn, if I could just add one thing, that's a really good point, because when we look back at the Medicare Advantage plans, that's something to consider because the Medicare Advantage plan, the monthly cost, whether you could maybe have a, a zero pay or your monthly pay might be 40 to $75 a month. And it's mm -hmm. a lot less expensive than your Medigap. But right. that's one of the things that, that Linda and I can help you with is to figure out which one of these plans might benefit you the best. Right, based on the services and what's going to be going on with you in the next within the next year. So there are services that Medicare does not cover, um, such as travel outside the United States. So these Medigap coverages basically will cover you in the United States. Now, there is a couple plans out there under the Medigap coverage that will cover you outside the United States, but Medicare A won't cover you. So it's really kind of a catastrophic coverage if you look at it. And I actually contacted an insurance company just to ask about it as I was doing some of the research. And basically what it is, is it's considered catastrophic. So if you are traveling somewhere outside the United States and you end up falling or whatever, and you end up in an ED, it will cover a percentage of that on a reimbursement level. So you will have to pay for it out of your own pocket, then submit the claim to the Medigap, and then they will decide whether it is a covered service or not. So you need to be really, really conscientious and do your due diligence as you look at these plans. Um, Medigap must follow the same federal and state laws and must be clearly identified as a Medicare supplement insurance. So because these companies also have Medicare Advantage plans, along with these supplement plans, you need to be aware of which plan you are actually enrolling in and the cost of these plans. And you need to do some comparison. 
the plans are considered standardized. So whether you choose one or the other, they're all going to offer you the same standardized plans or standardized services under these plans. And these plans are standardized as A through D, F, G, and then K through N. Just so you know, if you live in Massachusetts, Minnesota, and of course the great state of Wisconsin, these plans are identified differently. So just know that. But yes, they are all identified, they are standardized, and depending on what you want, because some of these Medigap plans will cover certain dental services. They will cover certain vision and hearing aid services. They will cover certain other services outside of it. They have broadened their scope of services, but you're going to be paying for them a lot more monthly. And depending on your age, that is where that Medigap coverage will also increase because these coverages will increase as you age. So what do you need to know more about Medigap? Is that you will pay a monthly premium on top of your Part B. I can't stress that enough. You pay a Part B premium to Medicare through your Social Security, a baseline, plus maybe more based on your income, but you still will have to pay a monthly premium. And plans are different. And as I said, they may offer extra benefits outside the standardized plan. Not all plans are equal and the costs will vary and go up as you get older. Your plan may cost you $1 a month when you're 82. And if you stay on that same plan when you're 88, it could be three times higher. It may not be that high, but you need to understand it will vary based on your age and it only covers one person. So each individual that is eligible for these plans must have their own plan. So one thing to take in effect is how much are you going to pay versus how much is your spouse going to pay? You may be very healthy and your Medigap coverage may be very, very low. You may not have any medications. You may not be on any type of, you know, have any type of chronic illnesses, whereas your spouse may have more issues going on with them and their costs may be higher. But looking at the combined cost, you need to understand whether that is going to be cost effective and efficient for you and meet all your needs. It is also illegal for someone to sell you a Medigap policy if you are in a Medicare Advantage plan because you don't need it unless you're planning to switch back to original Medicare. If you drop a Medigap policy to join a Medicare Advantage plan for the first time, you have a single 12-month period. So your trial period is only once, and it's only the first time to get your Medigap coverage back. After that, you're held to the same standards as anyone else, whereas once you start that plan, you're held to that plan for 12 months. So... We've talked a lot about these plans and a lot about Medicare, but I wanted you to understand that you do have rights under Medicare and protections. So you do need to be treated as you work through these and talk with people, whether you talk with Medicare directly, or you talk when you go, or you go online to Medicare.gov, or you talk to an insurance broker in regards to one of the Medicare Advantage plans. You are to be treated with courtesy and dignity and respect at all times. You are protected against discrimination. Your health insurance must also be kept private and never give out information unless you are sure that that is exactly what you want and you know who you are talking to. You are entitled to get information in a way that you understand from Medicare and healthcare providers and contractors. That is why it's really important that if you're not understanding something and they have tried to explain to you that you really get an advocate involved because we actually kind of understand the language and we know the questions to ask and we've done our due diligence and we've done our research in regards to this. So it helps you in making those informed decisions that are important to your health care. It also under the Medicare rights and protections, you need to learn about your treatment options in a language that you understand and actively participate in them. You need to get the Medicare information in a language you understand and in an accessible format. Some people don't have internet in their home and don't have access to a computer and want things 
handwritten or given to them via mail or mail to them or hand it to them in their doctor's office. You need to get answers to your Medicare questions, either by calling CMS or going to Medicare.gov, calling Social Security, or utilizing an advocate. You need to have access to your healthcare providers and emergency services, and Medicare should always address your questions and concerns regarding payment and coverage and your appeals. So if you would like more information in regards to your benefits and the basics of Medicare or understanding specific plans or have questions in regards to plans that you have been investigating, please feel free to contact Pam or myself. We are board certified patient advocates and we can help you. And if we can't help you, we will help you get the resources and go to the right people that can help you. So please feel free to reach out to us at 1-800-330-MYRN or 6976, or on our website at yournurseadvocateconsulting.com. We want to help you make informed decisions regarding your health care. It is confusing, it is complex, and it gets more and more complex every single year. And the information that I've provided is just the tip of the iceberg. Each of these plans have their own set of policies and procedures and services that you have to follow. And some of them are 20 and 30 pages long. Please feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help. And as I said, if we can't help, we will help find you someone that can help answer your questions. So if there's any questions, please let us know. We're more than willing to help. And all of our references have all come to us from the Department of Health and Human Services, Medicare and Medicaid Services under Medicare.gov. Thank you so much for attending this webinar. We hope that it has been informational for you and has helped answer some of your questions. But again, feel free to reach out to Pam or myself with any further questions. We're here to help. Thank you again. And this is going to wrap up our presentation. Linda, thank you so much. That was You did an excellent job in trying to um, share all this Medicare benefits in a way that we can all understand. You know, I encourage everyone, go back. If you um, get access to the recording, go back, go through it again, look at your budget, look at your travel habits, look at your health, and, you know, try and determine, you know, make a list of what things that you absolutely want to have in a plan. And then start to narrow that down. And this is something that Linda and I can do too. We could we can look at a few different plans. We could make some grid. We can really uh, drill down and help you make some choices. So hopefully uh, this has given you some food to thought, a lot to chew on. Linda, again, did a, an excellent job. So we just want to thank you so much and we'll see you back here soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.